Howdy readers, I'm Jason, this is chapter and verse, and uh, I'm sick. I've been sick for five days now, uh, so you'll have to forgive uh, the fact that I've been uh, been away for, I don't know, six or seven days now, it seems like. <clears throat> it's been a while, but I've had a, yeah, I've had a wicked uh, sinus cold since uh, last Thursday morning, so um, I'm buying stock in Kleenex. Um, and Fisherman's Friends. For those of you who don't know, um, if you have a bad sinus cold, there's this disgusting lozenge that you can buy called Fisherman's Friends. And they taste like clove tea strained through a gym sock. Um, but they, oh my God, like they open your sinuses up like nothing else on the market. I'm, I'm not even joking. So... <clears throat> That was not an official plug, but I'm a strong believer in those uh, lozenges. So tonight, uh, I'm going to do the finished the book tag. Uh, this tag was created by Headless Books, uh, which may or may not be uh, an allusion to uh, Washington Irving. I'm not sure. Uh, I was tagged uh, to do this by Steve Donahue, the inestimable Steve Donahue. Um, and it's uh, eight questions, and um, so I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, question number one. Uh, do you keep a list of books you read? And, uh, and this is a question that, uh, that one of my subscribers asked uh, in a comment recently on another video of mine. And um, anyway, so I know some people have been curious about this. I do keep a list of the books that I read, and it's actually a little journal. And this... Is it right here? It used to have a little uh, flap that came over, but that uh, got worn off and eventually kind of tore away. Uh, but this is my book journal. And this was given to me as a gift by Kelly uh, long before we were dating. We were just friends. Uh, she and I were friends for mm, five years, I think, before we before we started dating. And uh, and she gave me uh, this, this journal. It's just a blank, um, blank journal. And so how I use it is, so let me take the little ribbon out here. I use it just like this. So at the beginning of a year, I just write at the top of the page uh, the year, and then I list the books as I finish them, and then the uh, month and the day that I finish them on. So this is the beginning of 2014 right here. And uh, as you can see, Stoner, uh, Hunts and Dreams by Tom Drury, who is completely underrated. If you have not read Tom Drury, you have no idea what you're missing. Um, I think he is the uh, best writer of contemporary dialogue uh, working today. But uh, but yeah, this is this is my book journal. Um, one of the really nice things about keeping a book journal is that <clears throat> it helps me situate books in um, in context in the context of the rest of my life. Uh, so, I mean, in any given year, right, we know what we're doing. Okay. So like, I know what I was doing in December, 2010. That was the month that we moved from Missoula to Casper. And with the book journal, I can actually go back. And, uh, if I don't remember what I was reading at that time, I can, I can check the pages and see what I was reading at the time. And it somehow it, uh, it clarifies my memories of, of what my life was like at that time, what was going on. But it also, um, it makes it easier to remember when I go back and see it, uh, it makes it easier to remember specific moments when I was reading, where I was, what I was doing, uh, what part of the book I was on um, at that time in that spot where I was reading. And uh, so it's just, it's just a useful tool. Um, and I am this far into it. I've been keeping this thing for 18 years now. Uh, Sometimes 18, God, yeah, 18 years now. And that's how far into it I am. So I'm about almost halfway into it. So anyway, that's my book journal. <clears throat> I also keep a list on Goodreads, um, as many of us do. Uh, number two, uh, if you record stats, what stats do you record? Um, I don't uh, record stats, but I do... Um, I do the reading challenge on Goodreads every year, and I love how at the end of that um, challenge, at the end of every year, they kind of compile stats for you. It's a little bit misleading. Um, like So, for instance, I read the Norton Critical Edition of Little Women, 
And the novel itself takes up only like a half to two thirds of that book. And the rest of it is, is, uh, you know, critical material. And, uh, and I didn't read all of that. So Goodreads doesn't know that that's not part of the book. So when Goodreads tells me at the end of the year, you know, you read 26,000 pages this year or what have you, um, it's a, it's, it's not quite accurate, uh, just because it doesn't, uh, discriminate, uh, as far as, uh, you know, textual notes and, and, uh, appendices and all that jazz and editions that we read. But, uh, but I really love that, uh, Goodreads like, Oh, the longest book you read was this. And the shortest book you read was this. Um, and you read X number of pages and, um, I don't remember the other things that kind of calculates or tallies, but, um, but that's always a lot of fun. I really enjoy looking at that at the end of the year. <clears throat> uh, number three, do you give a star rating uh, to books? I do. I know a lot of us uh, here on BookTube don't. Um, I think this is something that is hardwired into me as someone who used to be a teacher and who used to give grades, uh, used to grade exams and quizzes and papers. Uh, but also someone who has been using uh, the Internet Movie Database basically since its inception. So I've been rating films for much longer than I've been rating books on Goodreads. Um, now, I wish the five-star system on Goodreads had a little bit more nuance to it, at least half stars. It would be really nice if we could actually give, you know, 3.1s and 3.2s and, and um, you know, decimal points like that. But... Uh, but it doesn't, so I live with it. Um, and if I'm really, uh, really like this is really a 3.5 or a 4.5, then uh, I'll either round up or round down, and then I'll just do a little one-line written review saying something to the effect of, you know, it was 3.5, but I rounded up because, um, you know, the the writing was so, the prose was so beautiful, the language is so so beautiful. Let's see, number four. Do you review books? Um, no, not really. I don't review them professionally, and I rarely review them on Goodreads. Um, I review them in my book club, which is hosted through Goodreads, and occasionally I will essentially kind of copy and paste my uh, book club review and use that as a as a just a regular Goodreads review. I'll kind of tweak it a little bit and take out specific mentions to book club members and things like that. And then sometimes I read a book that either just gets my goat um, and just really pisses me off. And so I'll write a review of it or a book that I just find absolutely brilliant and need to say something about. So um, there may be, I may do a kind of mini series on my channel in the future, kind of featuring some of my written reviews from Goodreads. And um, we'll see, but um, but there are some books that I've reviewed on there that I'm not going to be rereading, but I would like to kind of, I don't know, I'd like those reviews to enter the conversation on BookTube a little bit, uh, particularly uh, when it comes to some of the some of the teen stuff that I've read, and YA stuff that I've read. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Number five, where do you put your finished books? I put them back on the shelf where they belong. I... Um, rarely get rid of books we call our collection probably i don't know once a year but we don't get rid of a ton of stuff um we're pretty discriminating about what we buy so um number six how do you pick your next book um i'm a mood reader so in the past typically it's it's whatever um i just have a hankering for right then sometimes i'll just come down here to the library and and browse the shelves and um sometimes a spine will jump out at me um but here lately, I'm kind of toying with this idea of doing like a quarterly uh, TBR, and that is going pretty well so far. Um, I feel pretty comfortable with the idea. Let's see. Number seven, uh, do you have any rituals when you've finished a book? I don't even really know what that means. Um, no, I get on Goodreads, I rate it, um, I enter it in my book journal. And um, if there are passages from it that I really, really love and that I've marked, um, I will transcribe those into my commonplace book. Um, if you don't know what a commonplace book is, I will uh, link you uh, in the description box below to my version of uh, Fariba's uh, commonplace book tag in which I elaborate on uh, what a commonplace book is. But those are really the only kind of rituals that, uh, that I have or do. I'm not someone who, you know, has to go for a walk or something uh, after he finishes a book. I mean, I can understand why someone would do that. You know, let it uh, let it kind of percolate in there a little bit. Um, 
let it stew a little bit. But uh, but I'm not I'm not that guy. Um, I like to just move move on to the next book. Uh, last question eight. Uh, who do you tag? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna tag three people, uh, none of whom I have tagged before. So I'm gonna tag uh, Jen at Remembered Reads. Um, so anyone who has seen the English Patient four times in the cinema is somebody that we should all want to hear more from. Uh, I love the English patient. I love the book. I love the film. And uh, when I heard that in one of her videos, I was like, yeah, she's got good taste. Uh, she's cool. So Jen at Remembered Reads, you're tagged. Uh, the second person is a brand new uh, booktuber. She only has four videos up. Uh, I loved her newbie tag. Her newbie tag was absolutely wonderful. Uh, and that is Amanda at Fiction in Flannels. Uh, it is probably my favorite channel name of anyone's channel on BookTube. And, um, and she is just, uh, she's just a really charming uh, young BookTuber who seems uh, very intent on kind of finding her voice uh, in the community and kind of where she fits in the community. And um, yeah, like I said, she's just got four videos up, but uh, I'm already just terribly impressed uh, with her. So Amanda at uh, Fiction and Flannels. And then lastly, I tag uh, Joseph Francis Burton. Uh, Joseph is a, um, a smart, slightly wacky, and uh, deeply thoughtful uh, booktuber who has been kind of with my channel um, basically since its inception. Uh, I think he was probably one of my very first subscribers. And, uh, and he's got a very cool channel as well. Um, it's a channel you never, you never quite know what to expect from, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, I like being kind of kept, uh, kept on my toes a little bit. So, so anyway, that is the uh, finished the book tag. I am going to go upstairs and um, I think make myself some tea, which I've been drinking a ton of the last uh, few days, and I'm going to rest. But I will see you guys again uh, very soon. Adios.